Hi, this is Julian from AWS. Welcome to episode 5 of my podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to be notified of future episodes. In this episode, I'm going to cover some new features that came out this year, and I'll share some resources as well, and I'll point you to a pretty cool demo that I recorded as well. So, uh, let's start with the news. It's the beginning of the year and things are still a little bit slow, but some cool features came out recently. Uh, the first one I want to talk about is a new feature in Amazon Comprehend, our natural language processing service. So Comprehend added multi-label classification for custom classifiers. So that's a mouthful, let me explain. Um, initially, uh, you could do things like sentiment analysis and entity extraction and so on with Comprehend. And after that, the team added the ability to create your own custom classifiers. So you could upload your own data set and train your own uh, text classifier on your own labels without worrying about the internals or infrastructure. But that was for single labels. So let's say you wanted to classify movies, then you know a certain movie could only be a certain category, you know, action or drama or comedy, etc. Now you can have multiple labels per document, and you can train classifiers that will be able to assign those multiple labels to new samples. So, in the example of movies again, you know, a movie could be action and comedy, or it could be you know drama and history, something like that. Uh, and if you have um, uh, maybe legal documents, uh, you could classify them uh, with a high level category like contract or uh, season desist or uh, term sheet, whatever. And you could have another category giving you extra details. Okay, so this multi label feature uh, gives you lots of flexibility to uh, train and build models to classify text data in many different ways. So uh, let me show you quickly how this works in the console. This is the Amazon Comprehend console. So let's just open that menu and we can see custom classification here on the left. And if you click on the train classifier uh, button, you see that now you can train multi-label documents, okay? And here's that movie uh, example again. So. Uh, uh, text one could be a comedy movie, text could be a drama movie, and text B could be comedy and drama movie. Okay, so that's how you do it. Just uh, go to the console and select multi-label mode. And of course, this is also present in the APIs. Okay, simple enough. The next feature I want to talk about is an Amazon Translate feature. So Translate is our translation service. You guessed right. And uh, Translate can now do batch translation. Uh, previously, you could do um, real-time translation or translate uh, one piece of text at a time using the, uh, the API. Now you can actually translate uh, a batch of documents stored in an S3 bucket. And these documents can be in plain text or they can be HTML documents. So that's pretty cool if you have a bunch of web pages, for example, you want to translate. And you can just put all those in S3, create a batch translation job, and get all your files translated in one go into uh, the language that you like. Um, one restriction, though, uh, at the moment, you cannot do automatic language detection with batch processing. So you have to know uh, in which language those uh, input documents are. But that's not too bad, I guess. Okay, let me show you quickly where this is in the console. This is the Amazon Translate console, and if we open the menu here, we see a new entry for batch translation. So clicking on this and then create job, we see the parameters for a job, a name, the source language, the target language, and of course, the location of input data, the input file format, which could be text or HTML, and of course the location of output data. And that's about it, right? So super simple. And using this, you can now translate a ton of uh, documents in one go. That's pretty cool. The next feature I want to talk about is actually a bit of a, 
a bit of a discovery that I've done uh, while uh, reading API documentation. So this wasn't formally announced, and I guess the team thought I wouldn't notice it, but guys, come on, you know me. Uh, and uh, I'm talking about a new feature in SageMaker Autopilot. As you probably know, SageMaker Autopilot is a new capability in Amazon SageMaker that lets you automatically build a model and it selects the algo automatically, etc. If you're interested in more detail, um, I have a bunch of YouTube videos on my uh, on my channel showing you the uh, the autopilot workflow end to end. But anyway, so the feature I'm referring to is actually uh, the metric that uh, you ask autopilot to optimize on. So when the service launched at reInvent, you could only optimize for accuracy, right? And uh, well, as I found out reading the documentation, uh, you can now optimize for more metrics. So let me show you. This is the documentation for the Create AutoML Job API, which is the one that we use in SageMaker Autopilot to get things going. And if we look at the parameters here, we see a parameter called metric name. Okay, and uh, as I mentioned before, accuracy used to be the only a metric you could optimize on, but now you can use mean square error and you can use uh, F1 and F1 macro, okay, which are two variations on the uh, the F1 score. Um, so that's an improvement because of course different problems require different metrics and, uh, and now you can pick the metric that fits your problem best. And the last bit of news I want to mention is not AWS news, but it's important to a lot of you. Uh, TensorFlow 2.1 came out in the last few days and uh, of course plenty of bug fixes and, and feature additions etc but there are really two things I want to mention first this is the last TensorFlow version that will support Python 2.7 so all of you out there who have uh, procrastinated and delayed uh, upgrading your scripts to Python 3 well bad news right I mean it's now time to do it Otherwise, you know, you'll be stuck with uh, TensorFlow 2.1 until the end of time, which maybe isn't a problem, but it's always better if you can uh, leverage the new frameworks. So, you know, time to update those scripts. And uh, the second thing I want to mention is that when you install TensorFlow 2.1 and up, I would expect, uh, as in, you know, pip install TensorFlow, you're now installing by default the GPU enabled version. Okay, uh, so if you if that's what you want, fine. If you want to install it for a GPU powered machine, that's okay. Uh, if you're uh, just wanting to install it for a CPU version, then um, you have to explicitly pip install TensorFlow dash CPU. Okay, so the GPU version will work fine on on the CPU machine, of course, but it's uh, it's a little bulkier. And especially if you want to uh, use it inside a container, you you know you want to have the smallest possible container. Then uh, don't forget to specifically mention that uh, TensorFlow CPU version. Okay, and you can of course check the release notes for all the other uh, tiny and not so tiny additions. That's it for the news. <laughs>
And I also uploaded a video showing you how to deploy models on StageMaker, and that's a whiteboard video. I know some of you are uh, big fans of that, so help yourself. And I go through three scenarios. The first one is deploying a single model. The second one is deploying different model variants on the same endpoint. And the last scenario is multi-model endpoints where you load and unload models dynamically. Uh, a recent feature that is a great, great way to optimize cost for customers who have hundreds and maybe thousands of models. So uh, look for that one. And last, and last but not least, I uploaded a demo of an open source tool called Sageify written by my friend Pavlos. So thanks again for this, Pavlos. Sageify is an, a CLI tool, a command line tool to um, train and deploy models on SageMaker. So uh, if you don't even want to look at the SageMaker SDK, if you just need simple CLI commands, well, take a look at Sageify. Okay, well, that's it for the extra resources. <laughs>